Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So today I'm here to talk about an interesting topic, I think. It's something I've been thinking about lately because we've had some smaller phones that have come out in the last couple of months. We had the Pixel 4a, which one of the most fantastic phones of the year. And then later on towards the end of the year, we had the iPhone 12 mini. These two are kind of like the best representatives for best in class for small phones 2020. And this one's more on the premium side, this one's more on the budget side, but they both bring a lot to the table and they both kind of have an interesting take on them. And why is it that people are so excited about them? I mean, we have much, much larger phones, so wouldn't you want a gigantic phone like the Note 20 Ultra or maybe something along the lines of like the Fold, which is a tremendously large phone? There's a lot of stuff out there in the landscape when it comes to shapes and sizes, but I think that this is really important. And I think that it's great that the manufacturers have taken notice of the fact that maybe some people want smaller phones. And I wanna talk about that in this video. But before we get into that, I do wanna say, if this is your first time stopping by the channel, I appreciate you being here. If you enjoy the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. Now, let's talk about some small phones. Ironically enough, I find it a little odd that I'm calling a Pixel 4a a small phone. It's got a 5.8 inch screen on it. If that screen size sounds familiar to you, it should. And that's because it's been in one of the biggest phones for the last couple of years. I'm talking about the iPhone 10, the iPhone 10s, the iPhone 11 Pro all 5.8 inch screen. So the fact that this one has a 5.8 inch screen, I don't think it makes it an overly small phone, but even iPhone has kind of shifted their strategy and bumped up to a 6.1 inch phone for the regular iPhone. And then the Pro of course is larger. And then you've also got the Pro Max, which is very, very large. So taking a look at that, and then also this guy right here, this one is probably the best use case scenario when it comes to a small phone. 5.4 inch screen. It's basically the same size as the iPhone SE, which came out earlier this year, but instead of having touch ID and a 4.7 inch screen, this one, it now has face ID and it has a 5.4 inch screen on it. You can see it takes up the entire basically edge to edge setup on the screen. And I think it's important that these phones exist, but you may be wondering why does somebody want that? Like why in the world would you want something that has a smaller battery? It's got a smaller form factor when you can have something like this. I mean, why, why do you want to look at the internet on this when you can have this? I mean, look at this. There, the, the size difference on this is ast astronomically different. I mean, look at that. We have the Note, we have the iPhone 12 mini, and then even placing it next to the Pixel 4a. I mean, you can see there's a difference here, but a lot of phones are big. Even a lot of the mid-tier phones now, 6.5 inch, 6.6 inch, 6.7 inch. Bigger is better, right? Doesn't everybody want a really big smartphone? Well, no, they don't. And there are actually really good reasons why. The first reason why is typically price. Whenever it comes to price, smaller phones are typically cheaper. <laughs> the iPhone 12 mini kind of broke the mold on that one this year at $729. I was really hoping it was gonna be less. When they announced this phone, I was really, really excited about it because I do kind of like some of the smaller phones. I've really enjoyed the iPhone SE. I liked the iPhone 8 before that. I think it's a good form factor for a lot of people. And usually it's cheaper. The iPhone SE 2020 is only $399. So that's a really good deal with what you get in the hardware package. So no complaints there at all. And I thought that this one would be cheaper. It didn't work out that way, but still, there's like no compromises on this phone whatsoever. It surprisingly gets decent battery life. It's got solid cameras on it. It's just as powerful as the iPhone 12, 12 Pro, 12 Pro Max, but in this itty bitty body. But yeah, price is usually a factor. And then you look at the Pixel 4 8, $349. This is an amazing phone, like game changing, revolutionary at the price point for 350 bucks. I absolutely love this phone and a lot of people do. I don't know anyone who's got this phone who's been like, you know what, I don't like that. Especially at the price. I mean, this really feels like a five, $600 performance level phone, but you're getting it for essentially half the price. So yeah, price is definitely a factor because who wants to get something like the Note 20 Ultra, $1,299 or the 12 Pro Max, the iPhone that I'm recording on right now, $1,099. Not a lot of people want to spend that kind of cash and there's really not a lot of performance difference. It's just a much bigger bigger platform of the same phone in, in a lot of instances. So one, price. 
Another reason why is because they're very easy to use one-handed. You can do everything with this. And when I was using this phone, testing it out, all that jazz, it's so nice just being able to hold the phone. You can type with one hand. You can take pictures with one hand. You can do everything with one hand. It's really, really nice. As opposed to this, and I'm like, I, I can't even, I can't even touch half the stuff on the screen. I have to rotate the phone in my hand just to hit the fingerprint sensor. So it makes for a really nice, enjoyable experience. And I think a lot of people have kind of forgotten that because we've been so used to these huge, gigantic phones that we've been using for a long time. And also, you have to imagine a lot of people that are using older phones, some people hold on to their phones for a long time. They came out with the iPhone SE 2020 to try and catch up people who are using the old iPhone SE, the old iPhone 6. That's a big gulf. So if you haven't picked up a new phone in two, three, four, five years, maybe you don't want to get one of these gigantic phones. Maybe you're worried about it fitting in your pocket. Maybe you're worried about fitting in your purse or your backpack, or your briefcase, wherever you use this phone at, there's a significant size difference here and they effectively do the same thing. I mean, this one right here has a stylus. I'm gonna omit that right now. Just talking about phones of different sizes, you know, largely, as long as you get one that's made well, you don't have any performance offset. And in a lot of cases, you get the exact same performance. Like this one, the iPhone 12 mini, the same as the iPhone 12, the 12 Pro, 12 Pro Max. All of that in this itty bitty body, this tiny package. And yes, this one is a little on the expensive side, but I think it's just because my brain is like, look, this thing's so small, it shouldn't cost that much money. But again, thinking about it differently, when it comes to cell phones, when it comes to electronics, Making components smaller means it costs more money. To make things smaller, to do the same thing as something that's larger always costs more money. So in our brain, typically, yes, you're like, okay, well, this one's eight ounces instead of 12 ounces, it's cheaper. Or this one is one pound instead of two pounds, it should be cheaper. Well, when it comes to electronics, smaller does not always equate to cheaper if it's on the same level. If this were dumbed down, if it had older stuff in it, there are offsets there to where, okay, they can bring the price down more. like. The iPhone SE has one camera, it has a cheaper LCD screen, it has only an 820p resolution, it has a older chip in it, it has less RAM, you know, things like that. So whenever you look at those things versus what's in here and what all they jam packed into it, when you take that and compare it to what you have right here with the iPhone 12 mini, there are a lot of differences, you know, that cost money. And yeah, so first, like I said, price is a factor, two, size is a factor, and the last reason is, is nowadays you can do it without compromises. Like in the past, smaller phones were usually cheaper. They had less quality specs in them. They weren't as good. So when it came to price, performance, value, and also ergonomics, you were usually missing out on something. So the whole thing was scale it up, make it bigger, bigger, bigger. And we got all these bigger phones because of course you can put a bigger screen. It's more enjoyable. It's like having a portable tablet in your pocket. There's a lot of benefits to having a bigger screen, but not everybody wants that. And now there's there's no compromises. And it's important to keep these phones out in the landscape because it gives us choice. And choice is probably the last big reason. It's important for us to have choice. Whenever you have manufacturers that just make one size phone, one size fits all, that doesn't really play to what everybody wants. I mean, not everybody wants to go to McDonald's and get a large supersized meal. Not everybody wants to go get the exact same thing. People want different phones. I like Blackberries with physical keyboards, but I also like iPhones. I like Android phones. I like choice. I like the ability to have a different experience whenever I use different phones. There is a different experience in using a 5.8 inch phone versus a 5.4 inch phone versus using a gigantic 6.9 inch screen phone. There is, and there are pros and cons to both of them, but at the end of the day, it means that there's more phones out on the market at different levels, different tiers, different price points, different form factors. It allows us to use whatever phone that we wanna use, and I think that that's great. So whenever you take a look at it and look at what people want, they want things at different affordable options, they want things at different sizes, choice, price, performance, all of that bundles into, finally, I think it's important that some of the manufacturers like Google and Apple realize that they've been moving away from that. Everything's been bigger, 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 and the lower size phone sector has been poorly and sorely neglected. And now we have the iPhone SE 2020, we have the iPhone 12 mini, we have the Pixel 4a, and you know, some other devices are out there as well that fit that bill for people who wanna stay in a smaller 
size point and price point when it comes to their phones and they're not getting crappy products. You don't have to compromise. You get a really good phone experience. You still aren't spending as much money as a gigantic flagship. And then you can use your phone just like this and you can enjoy it. It's really nice. I mean, if you haven't used a phone that you can just hold in your hand and use one handed, you're missing out. I mean, yeah, it's nice having a bigger phone. I prefer to have a bigger phone. This is not my everyday carry. This will never be my everyday carry because I do like bigger phones, but I can appreciate having a phone with a smaller form factor. And I can also see, understand and appreciate why people want them. Not everybody wants a gigantic phone. And it's great that we have companies now that are recognizing that and see that, and it might be, be because of the market. I mean, there's so many phones that are oversaturated at the larger sizes and the larger price points. It makes sense for some bigger brands to recognize that, hey, there's a, there's a little gap there where we can still slide some of these phones and where people are missing out. People are waiting. They're holding on to the phones that they have now because they don't have anything that looks like their old phone to move over. So it makes it easier for people to transition to get a newer device. It still keeps the price down. It makes for a nice ergonomic, easy to use handheld size form factor and it gives people choice. So these are all the reasons that I think it's important that we have these smaller phones and why they're out on the market. And if you're sitting there with a gigantic phone wondering why do these phones exist, they're just not for you. And that's okay because we have the same thing with cars and restaurants. There's choice and choice is great and everybody wins when you have choice. So that's it on this video. I really just wanted to talk about that because I've been thinking about it a lot recently and I was talking to somebody else about the iPhone 12 mini and yeah, it's not for me as far as an everyday carry, but I do appreciate it for what it is and I see why people like them and why it's important to have them out on the market. So that's all I've got in this video. I know it's a little bit more of a philosophical discussion, but it's just something that I was sitting around thinking about and wanted to make this video about to talk about some of the key points for why I think it's important we still have these phones out on the market and why people keep making them and why people are making such a big deal about little phones. So that's all I've got. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section. I will get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys next time.